Today we are reading some of my favorite Spotify artist bios. These bios were selected because they are funny, they are weird, they don't make sense, or they just really, I feel, encapsulate the artist in a really unique way. The Spotify artist bio is one of my favorite features of the Spotify app because I feel like you can really tell a lot about an artist based on their artist bio. You basically got three types of artist bios. You've got the type that the artist very clearly wrote themselves. You got the artist bios that are basically Wikipedia pages. See also Sheryl Crow's Spotify artist bio. And then you've got the Spotify artist bios that are just... Well, I'll read you some and then maybe you can help me come up with an adjective for them. I told myself that once I found five that were pretty quirky, I could make a video about them and read them. Um, but this is just kind of what I've found from browsing the app. If you have a great, weird, wild, kooky Spotify artist bio, please drop it in the comments. I'd love to read it and maybe share it. Maybe there will be a part two, who knows? The first artist bio we're gonna read is from a band called Dream. They were definitely one of those like manufactured girl groups. They made I think one album and it's kind of a miracle that their music is on Spotify at all. But I chose this bio because I don't know who wrote it. I don't know if it was a robot or if it was one of them, but I'll read it to you and you, maybe you can let me know what you think. Multi-platinum recording artist Dream. This is our official Spotify artist page. Stay in contact with us on the many social media platforms that we use, both individually and as a group. You will find our group Instagram and Twitter accounts right here on our profile. We love our fans! Please stay in contact and keep the dream alive! Also, make sure that you check out the recently released Dream documentary on YouTube. And then there's a link to the documentary. I think it's funny mostly because the first sentence isn't a sentence, it's just the, the name of the band, the multi-platinum recording artist Dream. Stay in contact with us on the many social media platforms that we use both individually and as a group. And then it has the social media. Let's go to their Instagram and see. Oh my gosh. They have like 11.8 thousand followers. Good for them. Oh, and there's a link here to the Melissa Schumann who I guess maybe wrote that bio. It all makes sense. It all makes sense. This next Spotify artist bio is from a band called The Marvelous Three. I think I discovered The Marvelous Three because their song was on the radio station I was listening to when I finished the new Radicals album. Um, but anyway, here's their, here's their bio. Hey, this is a band called The Marvelous Three. We are a band formed in Atlanta, Georgia, and there's three of us. Butch Walker on guitar and vocals, Jace Fincher on bass, and Slug on the drums. If you're old enough to remember Gin Coast, Jeans, and TRL on MTV, I'm not, then you probably might have heard our one and only alternative radio hit song, Freak of the Week, off our record called The Hey Album. Released around the same time as songs like Flavor of the Week, spelled W-E-A-K, and Freak on a Leash. So we understand life can be confusing sometimes. It was purely coincidental and stuff. We might have come off a little different to music fans back then. You see, it was 1998, and we were wearing eyeliner and skinny black jeans, kind of when it wasn't cool to do that. Five years too early and 15 years too late, we suppose, lol. Anyway, radio played our song until that was done, and then our label, at the time, decided to be done with us as well. So after a follow-up album called Ready, Sex, Go that was even more of a curveball for what was cool at the time, Arena Rock? We called it a day and broke up. It was kind of the only way to get out of our recording contract with Neglectra. Sorry, Electra Records. It was a pun because Electra Records neglected them, I suppose. Well, here we are, 25 years later, since releasing Hey Album, and we thought it would be fun to play some shows and put out a new record of new jams as well. The new album from M3 called Four drops October 13th, 2023. Anyways, thanks for reading and thanks for listening. See you out there soon. M3. I think this bio is actually perfect because it's very from the heart. You know, you can really 
taste the jade how jaded they are with the music industry which i think is is always so refreshing especially because you know for for decades any music we heard came from a major label but now you can find anybody on spotify even the marvelous three and they don't have a label so they can just you know say whatever they want i don't think anybody checks these before they go live all right this next one is from grimes and grimes will change her spotify artist bio without without warning i think for a long time it just said messages from other worlds mostly um this one says now and it's like most most things grimes writes are like complete trolling of us grimes started producing music when she had to learn the program logic for her neuroscience class shortly thereafter she had a viral myspace page which allowed her to start booking shows and focusing full-time on music this is where it starts to get weird she lived in a crack den in montreal with no heat where she got frostbite twice and her neighbor was bludgeoned to death in the hallway playing raves until her 2012 breakout visions which was recorded during a two-week speed binge wherein she did not leave her bedroom upon the success of this album grimes attempted to enter society as a regular human which has clearly not gone super well but has nonetheless been entertaining she's since become an award-winning music video director as well as music composer producer engineer and singer songwriter she's toured globally to sold out crowds headlined festivals and is now moving into the space of corporate surrealism she recently had experimental eye surgery only available to the upper class. She put out her final Earth album in 2020. So the reason I say I think Grimes is trolling us is because she's she's clearly trying to create a contrast here between how poor she was and how rich she is. She has not had experimental eye surgery only available to the upper. I don't even know what that is. I don't even know what that would be. If you know what that is, again, leave a comment. I think that's like that time that she told us all that for exercise, she would like sword fight for seven hours a day and then, and then recover by spending the other remaining hours of the day in a deprivation chamber. I don't think she had experimental eye surgery, but maybe she did. Uh, who even knows anymore? This next one is a little bit tricky to talk about because there actually is no Spotify artist bio. There's also no Spotify artist photo. And prior to there being no Spotify artist photo, there was a photo of someone on this Spotify artist page who was clearly not the artist. The artist is Lily Rose Depp, who has a number of songs on Spotify because of her participation in a TV show called The Idol. I don't know if this is a clue that Lily Rose Depp is trying to distance herself from The Idol, which she should, but like I said, prior to there being no Spotify artist photo, it was a picture of the weekend. And I talked about this in my video, why I won't even hate watch the idol. And I haven't watched it since it came out. I, I did listen to the songs. You can listen to the songs. They are on this Spotify page. I just think it's crazy how like someone as high profile as Lily Rose Depp just has like radio silence on her Spotify artist page. You know, this is someone, I don't know if you ever do this, but sometimes I get my apps confused and I'll like open up Spotify when I mean to open up Instagram but I can totally see somebody opening Spotify typing in Lily Rose Depp you know especially if they were interested in the music from the TV show and it's just nothing no bio no not even let's see if there are links there are no links oh my god she's 131st in the world woof This next one I'm going to highlight just because I think it's really nice. I don't necessarily think that it's funny, but I think it actually captures the artist in a really strong way. I'm going to read it without the artist name, and I want to see if you can guess by the end who the artist is. It's big artist, and I'll just um, say artist when it's the name of the artist in the, in the bio. Artist's pristine prismatic pop has long been the blissful soundtrack for first kisses and swirling romances. But the multi-platinum Grammy, Joan, Juno, and Polaris Prize nominated Canadian stars knack for distilling a sea of emotions into brilliant song craft has wooed critics as deeply as fans. The singer, songwriter, and actress first burst onto the international scene in 2012 with the sly and sublime, I'm not going to say the name of the hit because that's going to give it away, 
That blockbuster hit from her breakthrough album top charts in over 47 countries, sold over 20 million singles, and was certified diamond in the U.S. It also earned her two Grammy nominations for Best Pop Solo Performance and Song of the Year. On her 2015 synth pop stunner name of album, she collaborated with Sia, Blood Oranges, Dev Hines, and Rotsdam Batmalji, Vampire Weekend. I, I don't know how to say his name, I'm really sorry. Expanding her sonic palette with shimmery synths and euphoric dance beats that channel the sugary rush of new flirtations. Noisy declared it the pop album of the year, while the beaming single I Really Like You went platinum. Her 2019 follow-up, Dedicated, covered even more music and emotional ground as our most hopeful romantic continued to chase her bliss through a breakup. The Atlantic called the album brilliant with its godlike bops. Artist returned in May 2020 with a gift for her fans, dedicated side B, a buoyant set of dance floor candy that affirmed her status as pop's undefeatable ambassador of love. That artist is Carly Rae Jepsen, who, who I love. I love Carly Rae Jepsen. I love that the last lines are pop's undefeatable ambassador of love. It shows that she really knows what she's writing about and she ha her she's like building her brand around like m the magic of falling in love which I think is super nice. That's all I got for you this time. If you know a weird, wild, or wacky Spotify artist bio, please drop it in the comments. If you like this video, let me know. It was super fun. I'd love to do something like this again. And while you're at it, like and subscribe if you enjoyed. It really helps support the channel and my goal is to bring y'all a brand new video every other week. Take care, everybody. Cheers.